How's it going everybody? Anthony from The Rock Studio here. I'm going to do a short video today demonstrating how to modify your USG for the addition of a 40 millimeter fan. Now this is a departure from my typical video which are generally based around audio, but I do run a company that installs audio systems in restaurants and bars and along with that I provide network installation as well, also for homes. So I install a lot of the Unify equipment and this is a very common modification for the USG which tends to just typically cook itself. When you plug it in you'll notice it gets really hot especially if you're putting it in a confined space or something like that. So uh, this is just a short video and I hope you enjoy watching my method for modifying the USG. Let's start this video off with just a disclaimer. This is going to void your warranty so make sure your USG works first and give it a test drive check it out before attempting this modification. Here's some of the tools we're gonna to use for this project. Several drill bits and then a stepped bit. Some people call it a Christmas tree bit. This bit goes from half inch to one inch or 12.7 millimeters to 25.4 millimeters. You'll need some other drill bits as well, so keep your index handy. You're gonna need a small screwdriver, like a technical screwdriver with a flat head. You're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver. You're gonna need a drill. In this case, I used a hand drill as well as a drill press. Typically, I'll do this modification in the field. I'll open up the back doors of my van and I'll get my drill bit index handy and my drill. And I'll just sit out there and work on this so I have everything on hand. It's a lot easier to do it in my shop. This is the first time I've done one inside. But it can be done in the field and that's how I typically do it. You're going to need a 40 millimeter fan. I like the Noctua fans myself. They're real quiet. And so far they've been very dependable. So the one I use for this task is the NF-A4X10. It's 12 volts, so you're gonna need a separate power supply to run it. I would like to see if you can run it off the same power supply as the USG itself, but I typically run a lot of cooling fans in a network rack. So what I do is I just make my own loom with 12 volts and I run all my fans off of that. Let's start disassembling the USG. First, we've gotta pop off this logo badge. It's just stuck down to an inner part using some double-sided tape. So carefully pry up and you can start to work it loose. I've already taken this one off, so it's gonna come off easier for me. I'm just demonstrating this for everybody. Flip the USG over and you can pry up the four rubber feet. Just set them to the outside of the screw holes. They can stay there. Take out the four screws on the bottom. Set the screws to the side where you won't lose them. Within the lid of the USG, you'll notice they've included the Great Pyramid of Giza. This is the most powerful component in the USG. We're going to unscrew that as well. Now flip over the Great Pyramid and you can scrape away the double-sided tape with your fingernail or a small tool. Like I said, I've already taken this tape off. There's still a little bit of residue on there, so I'm just demonstrating this. You're going to want to remove this tape because it's going to get covered in your fingerprints, dust and dirt, and also shavings and curls from your drill. This is how we're going to place the fan over the Great Pyramid. Now you're going to want to find a drill bit that fits the standard screw hole size for the fan. I've determined that the hole in the fan, which is a little bit smaller than the screw, is 1164 or 4.366 millimeters. Now we're going to drill one hole through the pyramid and we're going to use a standard fan mounting screw to hold the fan in place while we drill a second hole. Now if we were going to put in a second screw, we could see that the air coming from outside into the USG is going to be directed through a very small hole. We're going to need to enlarge this hole to increase the airflow. Now I'm going over to the drill press and I'll find the center of this hole and start enlarging it using gradually larger bits. This plastic is really strong and sticky. If you don't hold the part down hard enough, the drill can grab it and rip it out of your hands. So make sure to keep your fingers clear and be extra careful when you're doing this kind of process. For drilling plastic, I always recommend pretty high speed on the drill and very little tension on the drill bit to the part. You're gonna work your way up from a smaller bit all the way to the half inch one that we need to open up the hole for the stepped bit. Throw the step bit in the chuck and start enlarging that hole gradually. Go real slow when you're doing that kind of thing. You can feel the different steps as they come by. Eventually, you'll have to pick up the part and run it up the drill bit by hand, which can be sort of dangerous, especially if you're not using a drill press. I typically end up doing this by myself with one hand on the drill 
one hand holding the part on the tailgate of the van. Now you'll notice that even though we went all the way up to one inch hole with the step bit, the hole still isn't big enough. So we're gonna enlarge the hole by using the step bit and just working it along the inner diameter of that hole to widen it slowly. This part is really sketchy and it would benefit from a larger step bit, which I don't happen to have with me at the time. But you're gonna to wanna to get the diameter of the hole just to the inside of the two screw holes that we drilled earlier, or as close as you can get. Now clean up the inside and outside of that hole a little bit to maximize the airflow. Then you can wipe it down with a little bit of alcohol if you want. Noctua fans come with a really flexible rubber mounting option, which is an anti-vibration measure. You can choose to use these if you'd like. I typically try to reduce as much vibration as I can for my clients, especially if the server room is gonna be near a living space or a working space. Pulling the soft rubber mounts through is extremely satisfying. Next, we're gonna note the direction of airflow. On this fan and most fans, the direction of airflow is towards the sticker on the motor. Then we're gonna mount the fan to the remainder of the Great Pyramid. The motor should mount to the top of the USG. The airflow should be going down into the USG itself. Before you screw the fan down, note the orientation pins that are on the top plate of the USG. The two on the side are the same width. The one on the front of the USG is wider than the one on the back. So you're gonna want the power cord for the fan to come along the back side of the USG. So just make note of that before you screw it down. You'll see I eventually write the word front and an arrow on the inside of that cover plate of the USG just so I don't lose track of what I'm doing. You can trim off the excess rubber at this point and screw everything back together. However, I'm gonna show you a new part that I designed that's gonna make this whole job a lot quicker and easier. I carefully measured the Great Pyramid and I made a 3D model in SketchUp and then I exported the STL and printed it out on my resin printer. The dimensions are the same and it fits really well inside the lid. After I made this piece, I actually looked on Thingiverse and there are a couple of options out there for putting a fan on your USG. One of them that looks the most promising is a shroud that mounts to the back of the USG so you don't have to take it apart and void your warranty and it uses a blower fan to push cool air through the USG from the back. I've uploaded the files for this part to Thingiverse and you can also purchase this part from my website, aveastga.com. I was gonna demonstrate enlarging the holes to use a standard fan screw, but the resin that I've been using is really brittle, and as you can see, one of the holes split. So I'm just gonna skip straight to using the included rubber mounting solution. Now I can finish up by trimming off the excess rubber from the inside and outside, and I can screw the cover back on. Next, we're gonna work on the wiring harness. Grab a standard 5.5 millimeter by 2.1 millimeter barrel connector, I've been using these 12 volt DC, 5 amp power supplies for my fan setups. So far, these are the longest lasting ones I've found. I put links to all this stuff in the video description. Clip off the power connector for the fan. Then you can slide the shrink tube off. We're gonna reuse that later. You can look at the fan connector to figure out the polarity. The negative generally has a little arrow on it. You can see the arrow there at the top of the connector. And the black wire is negative, the red is hot. Now you can shorten that braided sleeve a little bit and then slide the shrink tube back over the wires. Finesse it a little bit to get it in place. Then since these conductors are really small, I'm gonna strip them twice as long as I need to and double them up and twist them together after I've doubled them up. Then double check the polarity on the barrel connector, insert the wires and clamp them down really tight and then double up. The screw terminals on the barrel connector have a tendency to loosen up over time. So I always give them a little extra finesse. Now let's stick the cover back on and reassemble the USG. Finally, I'm gonna plug the fan in and make sure it spins. Then I'm gonna plug in the USG so you can see how it all looks. Now the last thing I like to do before I install the USG in a rack is to get it up off of the rack shelf, give it a little more circulation underneath. The bottom panel of the USG is also made of cast aluminum and can get pretty warm. I like to have airflow on all sides of my equipment after it's installed. Now in this case, I'm using some foam rubber weather stripping, which serves two purposes. A, it gets the USG off the ground, and B, it adds a little acoustic dampening, some resonant dampening, which will help eliminate the vibrations coming from the USG through the rack, through the wall, into the living or working space next door. 
And that's a cumulative thing. The more you take into account the resonant vibrations over the whole system, the end product will have a marked improvement over using no mechanical or acoustical vibration dampening materials throughout your build. This weather stripping product that I found is pretty useful. I've used it on really heavy racks by doubling or tripling it up in length along the bottom of the rack so the whole rack will basically float, just as long as you find something that's really nice and squishy. Thanks again everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you'll come back and check out another video here at the Rock Studio.